Welcome to Content with Character, the weekly podcast that'll give you the momentum you need to create content with more ease, clarity, and laughter. I'm your host, content copywriter Emily Aborn, and I'm all about unconventional marketing approaches. I believe in your big ideas, and I'm excited to help you share them in a way that's distinctly you. We're back at it this week with part two of the social media conversation. This week, we're going to be speaking to the ever so common feeling of my social media is not working. And I'll be sharing what three things might be at the root of that. Plus, I'll give you some practical ways to start increasing your visibility off social media too. You came back. Hi and yay. Um, I want to start today's episode off by just saying another big old thank you for being here and embarking on what is still like kind of a relatively new adventure for me. Um, I'm sure it comes as no surprise because you can probably hear in my voice, but I'm having such a great time being here with you and I hope that you're having a lot of fun listening too. Today is going to be part two of the Pandora's box that I opened last week around social media because, well, there is more. There's always more. (laughs) And what I think is going to be actually even more beneficial than me going into the inner workings of each and every platform, not that I really did that last week, that was just kind of like more of like a high level because uh, I'm not a social media expert and I leave that stuff to the pros. But this week, I want to focus on what you can do, what you can actually work on from a social media content standpoint. And simultaneously, I want to give you some ideas on actually how to build your business offline too. So real quick though, before we get into it, today is officially the day that I'm pulling the winner listener review for my listener review contest. My plan this morning is to wake up, go for my walk, get my coffee going, do my little readings and my little journalings, play my Wordle word, and then I'm going to pick a winner. And I will announce that winner in next week's Content with Character episode, so stay tuned. If you missed your chance to win the review contest this time around and you're like, wait, what? What review contest? Don't worry. I will be having more listener fun for you to get in on down the road and give you opportunities here and there to participate. Um, I'm actually cooking up some things over here, so and I think you're going to want to know about them, so stay tuned. Stay closely tuned. Okay. And then one last thing before we get into the topic, if this is your first time listening, welcome here. My name is Emily Aborn. I'm the podcast host of this podcast as well as the She Built This podcast. I'm a content copywriter. What that really boils down to is that on a daily basis, I take what is inside the minds and hearts of women entrepreneurs and I turn that into website copy and blogs so that it can attract the things that are inside the clients they like to work with to them. So think of me as kind of like a little business matchmaker with the power of wordsmithing. Um, I'd say, and I think others would say this about me too, I'm really good at seeing the big picture and then boiling it down to the details that matter the most in your content. Um, I really love helping people to write and strategize their content from that lens. So if you're like, uh, say no more, Emily, I would love to learn more or I need that kind of wizardry in my life. The link to my website, emilyaborn.com will be in the show notes. It always is. Um, Uh, as well as all the other fun little places that I spend my time online, and we can connect there too. Okay, speaking of fun places online, let's move on to you and talking about your social media. I think we've heard plenty about me. Um, I cannot solve all of your social media woes. (laughs) I wish I could, but I can't. But while I can't do that for you, I did want to share with you a couple of thoughts that I've been sitting with as I've been kind of processing this social media puzzle for myself too. And when I say thoughts, I I like literally have been considering, should I challenge myself to do a blog a day on topics like this for a set period of time? So I have a lot of thoughts. I have many, many thoughts. (laughs) I don't know if I'm going to do that blog thing. It sounds like a lot, but it sounded fun when I thought of it first. Anyway, I have many thoughts. Take what you want from today's episode. Leave the rest. 
If you listened to last week's episode, you heard me share that it is really harder than ever right now to be, quote, successful on social media. And I'll make sure that I put um, last week's episode in the show notes, but also this episode from Andrea Jones of the Savvy Social Podcast, because Andrea echoes these thoughts in a recent episode that she did too called Why Social Media is Not Easy. The social media deck right now is not stacked in our favor. And Andrea really broke it down for for us and clearly explains why. But what that results in is that a lot of people end up feeling like social media isn't working or social media doesn't work. So my first question for you today as we get started, and this is something I've had to think about for myself too. What does that mean to you? What does it mean for you for your social media to not be working? Like what does that translate to? Now, on the flip side, what does it mean for it to be working? Like, what does it look like if your social media is quote unquote working for you? So I think this, I think we have to get really clear with ourselves on what we want from it and also whether or not social media can even realistically give us that, okay? So do you want it to get you more clients? Do you want it to give your brand a little like online home, a little space so that you can have some credibility if people go searching for you? Do you want it as a space to share your thought leadership and your ideas, to build connections and relationships? It can do those things for you. Um, So it's important to look at like, what do I really want from it? And is it realistic that I that I get that from it because it might not be realistic to have it be the place where you get all of your clients for. It might but from, sorry. It might not be realistic for it to be the entire place that your brand has a home and builds credibility. It might not be the only place you're sharing your thought leadership and ideas. So that's what I want you to to ask yourself. What does working mean to you? I think sometimes we put unreasonable expectations and pressure on, it could be any type of marketing, like any form of marketing, but I think we especially fall into the trap of doing this with social media. We expect it to do all the work, all the heavy lifting of getting us new clients or networking for us or being the thing that's going to help us scale our business. Like it is a tool, but we have to remember that it's not the only tool that we have and it, it it's not a one-stop shop. Like there are other things that we have to be doing too. So we're going to start with the three reasons on why your social media might not be working and then some ways I like to to use when it comes to like my time, energy, and just some little things you can do to focus on growing your business outside of social media too. And as a reminder, this episode cannot necessarily solve your personal fears, emotional blocks, mindset struggles, anything like that around showing up. These are definitely deeper issues. And for some of us, they really do hold us back. And so unfortunately, like I'm not a licensed therapist at that time, though sometimes I feel like I should be. (laughs) When, When someone tells me about what's holding them back in their content, I'm like, dang it, if I was only a mental health professional. Um, but there's some stuff sometimes that are go that is deeper going on and that is really holding us back from showing up. So today I'm not doing that. Uh, I'm just getting into a few of the reasons why social media might not be working. And it's not a comprehensive list, but I also did not want to make this like a five hour episode. So three things, three things is what you get from me today. Um, all right, let's start with those three. Reason number one, your social media might not be working because you're not being consistent. And you're like, no, Emily, please stop talking to us about consistency. (laughs) She's so consistent talking about consistency. I know I've said this 10 bajillion times and I will probably repeat it many, many more. But when I when I say consistency, I really do think that is a huge piece of success on social media. And it's important to remember, and I've said this many times too, but When I say consistency, I don't mean frequency. Frequency is how often you do a thing, the cadence at which you do a thing. So for example, daily, three times a day, four times a month, that's 
frequency. Consistency is the actual doing of the thing, the actual action at the frequency that you've set. And I say this to say, first of all, you can give yourself a little bit of a break because I don't want you thinking like, oh, I have to be more frequent, meaning I have to post three times a day or I have to show up on Instagram all day long. Like I say this to say, if you tell yourself you're going to post three times a week, hold that promise to yourself to do that with consistency. If you want to go into a group or you want to make time to go onto LinkedIn weekly, do that. Check in there weekly. Consistency, I think, is so much about holding that promise to ourselves just as much as it is uh, showing up for the people hearing and reading our content. And in some cases, I would say it's more holding the promise to yourself. Um, So for example, I made a promise, a commitment to myself to do a weekly content with character episode. And I also do a bi-weekly She Built This Podcast episode. That's the frequency I've chosen for those podcasts. Now, the, the hard part is, or the, the part where I get to uphold that commitment is that I consistently show up for myself and I consistently show up for my guests and my listeners in doing that, in upholding that frequency. And I think at the end of the day, like what I love about consistency is it really builds your confidence in yourself. It says like, oh, I can keep promises to myself. It also keeps the momentum and traction going because it's important to remember that this is a long game. These overnight Insta sensations we see, like I know it looks tempting and fun and easy, (laughs) but in reality, most of us are playing a very, very long slow, steady ups and downs and twists and turns game. So the other thing about consistency is I think that when you when you utilize it, it really allows you to give something enough time and truly test like what works and what doesn't work. If you're not consistent, you really don't have that accurate starting point to be able to figure out like what went wrong and how. So you don't really even know if social media is working or if it's not working or what about it is working or what's not working because you just haven't been consistent. Like you haven't put in the consistent time to know. Um, And then the other piece of it is just like really being consistent to your brand. And I guess like when I say brand, I actually just kind of mean yourself, like being consistently you. Like, are you consistent in what you're sharing? Are you consistently you? Or are you sort of just kind of like over all, like all over the place, you know, twist it, pop it, pull it, <laughs> like that kind of thing with your content. Um, I often worry about sounding like a broken record. Like I'd say I sound like a broken record, like mm, 99% of the time. I'm always talking about the same things over and over and over again. But I don't look at it as repeating myself. I look at it as consistency. And I want to encourage you to do the same. And that is not to say you can't try new things. That is just to say, I want you to give things a fair shake before deciding that they're not working or that they're not for you. Okay, reason number two. You only show up when it's time to sell. Oh boy, this is a huge pet peeve of mine. (laughs) This might be my biggest pet peeve. Um, I will be pulling out a small soapbox for this. So just a moment, please. Um, But no, really, if you if you haven't heard my podcast episode about the four types of content, um, I really want you to go back and listen to that. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Because here's my philosophy. And I think a lot of people would echo this. We cannot always be selling when we're showing up on social media. Like whether you're in Facebook groups or you're doing this on your own content, people, if you are always selling, if it's just constant promotion, like constant, like get on my email list. Here's what I'm doing now. Here's what I'm doing now. I have a one-on-one spot open. It's it's annoying and it's not interesting. Like that's not interesting content to follow. People will tune that out. They will breeze right past what you have to share. If all you're doing is showing up stealing the mic, dropping it and running. Okay. Like we have to work on some other different types of content. Um, I actually recently posted a social media post that it was like a meme. And with it, I asked people what others always talk about that drives them nuts. Like what others always talk to them about specifically that drives them nuts. Some of the answers were funny, like everything from weather to aging to prescriptions, uh, politics, sports, diet culture. Those were some of them. Here's one no one said. 
<laughs> and I feel this way. I'm like, this is the thing I don't like to talk about. <laughs> when someone only, and I'm, I'm not talking about like a friendship where you both share this and I share a little bit about me and you share a little bit about you. I'm talking about when someone only talks about themselves and they own, they're always selling me something. Like I'm like, oh my God, this relationship cannot go anywhere because I literally feel like you're always talking about your group program or you're always talking about your client opening or this new thing that you're doing that I could pay you money for. Like, look, I'm the number one cheerleader for things that people are building. Yay, go you. I, I am that person, okay? But also if you're constantly making me say yay, go you, like, or just always making, selling me something and saying like, to get into this program or get on this or do this or do this. I'm so disenchanted. It makes me sick. You can probably hear in my voice. It makes me sick, I tell you. All right. Conversely, some of you need to hear this message. You can't never sell. So the other thing I see is that people always show pictures of their coffee mug or their hiking excursions or dinners out with friends or their dog or their kids, but they never ever share who they are, what they do, how to pay the money. So obviously you can, you can probably like do the math here, but if you're asking your social media to be part of your business and part of your marketing and, and you want it to help you obtain clients and, um, build connections and do a little brand awareness for you. Like this isn't going to be the best strategy. So I think ideally we kind of want to blend these little fabulous parts together. Uh, and for the love of all things content. Okay. Uh, you also have to remember that like it's social. It is a two-way street. It is a relationship building tool. You Part of it is engaging and interacting and commenting and asking and sharing, cheering others on, like not just being fixated on your own promotional content. So if you are always showing up and selling something, that might be a reason that social media is quote unquote not working for you because it's just not the right diverse mix of content. Okay, and this brings me to reason number three, and that is just that your actual content or messaging isn't quite right. And I think what I want to say here is like sometimes that boils down to the fact that we're not talking to the right people or maybe we're not in the places that they are. So we're like talking to the right people, but we're kind of in the wrong place. And sometimes we're not talking to anyone really at all. We're just like, I'm just talking to anybody that will listen and everyone that needs this or like, sorry, everyone that has a body, you know, like we're not being specific enough. I'm not talking about like being super niche here, but I am talking about like using some specificity in your content. And I like to do this by closing my eyes before I create something and just like think about the person I'm speaking to and speak to one person. Like I just like to talk to one person and it helps me to be a little bit more specific. And it also saves me from not just talking to anyone and everyone, you know, because I think that's, that's sometimes the trap that we can get into. Um, the other thing about your actual messaging, your actual content, you could be talking down to people. And I want to know if you've ever experienced this because it might shed a little light on what it feels like. What do I mean by this? I mean, showing up and showing them how smart you are or making them feel lesser than, or, I mean, it's just kind of uninspiring when you make somebody feel more frantic or more overwhelmed. I will say personally, like, I don't think I've ever purchased something after someone made me feel overwhelmed or like sheer and utter crap about myself or stupid. Like I just never, when someone talks down to me, it is a huge turnoff. So here's what, here's the converse to that. It's like speaking to people like they're humans, like they're intelligent humans that you really respect. And you really, I mean, you want to attract people that are like smart and intelligent and that respect you as much as you respect them. So give them that same courtesy, you know? And it, I bet you that's a little bit of a nuance, but that's what I'm like kind of one of the things I'm really good at, I think, in looking at people's content and saying like, well, you might want to not talk down to people, you know, because it might make them feel a little lesser than. And we don't want to do that with our content. Um, and then on messaging, it, it might just be that you don't really have a clear message. And sometimes this is because we don't even have a direction yet. Like, 
sometimes we just really are unclear in what we're doing and that does come through in our content. But here's the other thing. It is genuinely hard to understand what some people do. Like some people just have very complex fields and industries. I just wrote for a client who, if you were not in their exact industry, your eyes would legit just glaze over if they started explaining what they do. It was so complicated. <laughs> and that's a very select few of people. But for for most of us, we just overcomplicate it. Like we just actually make it really hard to understand what we do or like exactly kind of what sort of transformation we offer or what kind of changes we are making in the world. Like we just overcomplicate it. And I like challenging myself personally to think about my business as though I'm talking to a kid. So for example, my nephew Max, he's eight. And if he asks Auntie Emily what she does for work, I just tell him, I would just tell him I write for people who don't have time to write for themselves. It's that simple. And I think even Max would hire me if I explained it like that. Like once he starts having to write papers, of course, for school, I feel like Max is going to be a client of mine. Um, No, but my, my point here is get clear on what you do. Make it so simple to understand what you do. And also get down and get simple on what drives you and like who you are and who you like to work with. Like how can you simplify every single part of your message, what you offer? And then once you've made it simple, I want you to distill it down and make it even more simple. Again, we're not like talking down to people, but it really helps you to refine your message. And I think once you do that, you're able to just express it in a more understandable way. And it translates to easier content to consume and content that people are going to want to consume more. Um, Industry jargon is one of the quickest ways to turn off people's curiosity. It's just a really quick way to kind of like say, eh, I have no idea what they're talking about and I'm going to carry on. All right, so to recap those, the three reasons your social media might not be quote working is one, you might not be being consistent. Uh, two, you only show up to sell. And then three, your messaging is off in some way. And like I said, there's more and there's also more within those things that you like little nuances that you might be missing. Um, okay, on to make some tweaks. Like let's make some positive tweaks so we can improve our social media. First off, if you have been being consistent and steady and you've given something a really good amount of time, it might actually be time to mix it up and try something new. Try a new platform. Try creating a new type of content. Try ditching a platform, joining a new Facebook group or a Facebook group if you're not part of one. Like the list goes on, but just challenge yourself. Like if you've really been consistent and you've been steady and you've given something time, what else might you try? Like what new thing could you try? Um, I would recommend you kind of like give something up before you replace it or sorry. In, yeah, because I don't want you to spread yourself too thin. But, you know, you do whatever is right for you. Um, but here's my point. The experiment is allowed to be over and you can decide on your next experiment anytime you want. So just remember that. Um, secondly, another tweak is just to remind yourself that social media is a piece of your marketing puzzle. It is one piece. And it's important to see what other ways you're showing up in your business and getting visible. Ideally, you want to weave them all together in a cohesive way. And here's what I love doing. I love weaving my social media into what I'm doing in other ways so that I can ping pong from what I'm doing in the real world to what I'm sharing on social media and vice versa. Let me give you an example. A podcast, that is another piece of a of my marketing pie. A podcast can be a great marketing tool. So then what if your podcast can then become a blog that helps bring people to your website? There's another piece of your marketing pie. And then you can break that down, both the podcast or the blog and the podcast and the blog into smaller social media posts maybe an email, maybe a speaking topic, all from that one podcast episode or that one blog. So I guess what I'm talking about here is just like, okay, can I get creative and think about like how to make my social media a little bit more a part of this pie so it does feel cohesive and it, and it mirrors anything else that I'm creating in my business. This is about baking your own little pie and not putting all the weight in that one slice. And also not making the social media slice like way over there when the rest of the pie is over here. Um, sorry to always use the pie analogy. It's just what pops into my head. I feel like I really want pie every time I talk about it. Anyway, 
Here's just like a little mindset shift for you too around social media. It's just a reminder that it is a tool. Like I know I already said that, but no one is forcing us to be on it. It might feel like it is like they are, but it's it's not really a have to in your business. And I like to see it as just a way to amplify what I'm what I'm already thinking and what I'm already feeling and what I'm already talking about, what I'm excited about. And I want to spread more good into the world and create conversation and connections. So I think this. I think if you look at it a little bit more positively and you do view it as just kind of like a tool, you will feel naturally more positive when you're showing up on it to use it for marketing your business and already your content will improve. Your social media presence will improve. Um, Okay, and then if marketing is your main focus for social media, I really would encourage you to choose intentionally how you use it and how to spend, how you want to spend your time on it. So here are just some like little tiny things I do. I actually have a whole list of these and I might go into these, Um, but some little things I like to do, which these help my content too. I swear to God, these help my content. It helps my content on a lot of levels when I spend less time on social media. And when I do spend that time and I make it concentrated and intentional, it just helps out my content. It's crazy. So to help myself out, I time block. Now, I personally time block a lot of my days, uh, my weeks sort of like in a cadence. And then soon I'm going to be focusing on kind of like doing that with my months too. And I might share that with you someday. But my recommendation for that is just to give yourself times to do things. So it's not always just like, uh, I have to wake up and post and what do I post about today? Like what if on Monday, you block out an hour for like marketing Monday, and then you kind of create it all or you at least get the rough draft of ideas. And then every day, all you have to do is block out 10 or 15 minutes, go in, make your post and interact a little bit. So time blocking is a huge, huge one for me. It's a huge way for me to make it more intentional for myself um, and also just help me when I am using it for marketing to stay focused on that task. And as I say that, I'm going to kind of weave a concept in at the end where I really don't believe in kind of like the shiny objects per se. Like I, I'm going to get into like, I do think that part of marketing is just like interacting with other humans in different ways. So um, the other one just around boundaries on social, like a, a way to help you, I guess, view it more as a tool and to focus your time on it is I do keep notifications off. So I try to use as many apps as will allow me to from my browser when I'm using them for business. And I don't have like push notifications on for anything, which is has been life changing. If you if you haven't already done it, it's really, really helpful, but it can also help Um, it can just help you stay focused when you're working on the other tasks in your business and also not feeling like you're on social media all the time. Um, I also think if you haven't already done one, it can be helpful to map out a strategy and just kind of like give yourself something to stick to, you know, like a little bit of a plan. And I'm not talking about someone else's strategy. I'm talking about your strategy. As I say this, (laughs) let me tell you why. I recently overheard someone, um, tell a friend that she posts a lot. She's like, you post so much. And my response in my head was like, yeah, she does. So what? Who cares? Mind your own business. (laughs) Like she can post as much as she wants or as little she wants. Stop looking at what other people are doing, how often they're posting, focus on your own marketing and content strategy and definitely stop judging them because I assure none of us have this down to a science. So I don't think you do that. I'm just saying focus on what works for you and don't worry about somebody else's strategy. Don't worry about how often or not often somebody else is posting that even if you view them as super, super successful, just look at your strategy and stick to it. Okay. And to wrap us up and take us home, I wanted to give you a couple of ways, just three, um, to not get annoyed (laughs) trying to market yourself on social media alone. So my first way is speaking. I think that speaking is a great way of getting your content out into the world, whether that be on a YouTube channel or speaking to organizations or on podcasts or having your own podcast, um, offering workshops, grabbing a group of fellow entrepreneurs and creating some opportunity that nobody has created yet that gives you each a chance to highlight your expertise and speak. 
I want to encourage you to share your message verbally, or I'm going to add in there in written form too is another way, but um, share your message in other ways than on social media, like your actual message, your actual content, sharing it in other ways than just on social media. Um, Number two, email. I have an unhealthy level of appreciation and affection for email, both in the way that I use my inbox, like I treat it with the reverence of a sacred temple, but also the way I sit down to really carefully and thoughtfully craft each and every email to my people every week. When I email, it's like I'm writing a letter. It's like when I used to write tons and tons of letters when I was a kid, including all the parentheses still to this day. But for me, email is a really um, intimate way to connect with people. It's a one-on-one way to connect with other people and share a little bit, go a little bit more in depth on things. So if you have a substantial list, or even if you just have a small but mighty list, That's a great alternative to marketing yourself on social media. And I think it's a really great way to build that deeper connection with your people. All right, last idea. Get ready for it because it's kind of silly. (laughs) Remember that you are a human being outside your business. So my marketing tip, it's not really a marketing tip. Go to a coffee shop. Go to your kid's soccer game, get your teeth cleaned at the dentist, call your plumber and get your leaky pipe fixed, schedule your hair appointment. And you're like, Emily, wait, what? I thought we weren't supposed to be selling everywhere we go. I'm not talking about selling yourself everywhere you go. I'm not talking about flashing your business cards in the checkout aisle at Target. And notice I did not even bring up networking events in this one. (laughs) That's another topic for another day. I'm just talking about focusing on the relationships, meeting people, connections, being open to possibility in your everyday life. I know it's groundbreaking. It's groundbreaking. (laughs) But really, I mean, like asking others, like, how can you help them? Letting them share with you what they do, being their friend, being a listening ear, being there for them, smiling at them and saying thank you, uh, sending them a funny meme that made you think of them or forwarding them an email because because it was what you guys talked about on the sidelines of the basketball game yesterday. What I'm trying to say is I think that it's time we focus on relationships and building quality connections with other people throughout our lives. I think most definitely that helps you on the personal front. And I also think it's a ripple effect to the business that you're building too. Like you never know where a conversation will go or who you will meet when you simply take one second to help somebody reach that Starbucks off the top shelf at the supermarket. Marketing most certainly does not equal social media. And it also doesn't mean always selling. It doesn't mean you're always going on and on and on about your business. These are not, these are pieces of marketing, sure, but that's not marketing. And in fact, like I kind of want to do away with the whole term marketing altogether. <laughs> not really. It's fine. It, it has meaning, but hear me out. Like what I want us to rem- remember to focus on is how you want to leave an impact an imprint on others. Like, how do you want to leave this world? How do you want to be remembered as a human being? Marketing, I'm always saying this, marketing is connection. It is building connection. It is sharing what you're excited about, but also letting others do the same. It is letting them see you as the holistic human that you are, and also seeing them too. So, these are my thoughts. <laughs> these are my thoughts on social media today. Uh, mostly these are like just kind of raw form, as you can tell by my many word trip ups. Um, but to, 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 to wrap it up, I just want to, to us all to remember social media is just one piece. There's no magic formula or equation to like making it you know, turn your business around in a day or something. But I do think that it takes with time and with consistency and with a little bit of humanness and that genuine desire to build connection with other people, I think it can be working for you a whole lot more. Um, Okay. Where are we headed next, Emily? Great question. Next week, I'm I'm actually going to let you know next week. How's that? 
<laughs> I hope you'll be here with the, with the, the cliffhanger like that. Um, but listen, if there's anything you'd ever love for me to cover for topics, I'm all ears. I really would love to speak to something specific that you're struggling with right now or something that you're seeing in the world. And you're like, ooh, I would love for her to cover that. So if that's you, Red Rover, Red Rover, send your thoughts right over to Emily at emilyaborn.com. I'm the only person, trust me, nobody is allowed to handle my emails for me. So I will respond to you personally. Um, And I thank you so much for listening. And I can't wait to chat with you next week when we have our surprise episode. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Content with Character. If you loved the episode, please make sure to subscribe to the podcast, rate, review, and share it with someone else you know it could help. For more content and visibility tips, visit my blog at emilyaborn.com. And be sure to connect with me on Instagram at emilyaborn. I'd love to hear how this inspired you to take action.